purpose of this video is for you to be able to determine these four things for any experiment. And what that means is if you had, were given a lab or had to do a lab, you could tell what those things, those four things are. I can tell what those are, this lab, what those four things are for this lab. Now, Square, Dr. Square, these people have a problem. This is it. It's crazy. It's really, really embarrassing when it happens at the wrong time. They've approached Dr. Square with this problem. And I'm going to illustrate the meaning of those terms in terms of this problem that these four poor souls have. Okay. A control. A control is something within your experiment that you design or set up so that you have a way to control, excuse me, a way to interpret your results or to know if your results are valid or not. In this example of the four people having this crazy, crazy uh, syndrome, Dr. Square gives them pills. One has got a medicine that he has concocted to figure out. He's got the medicine that he's con concocted to help them with this disorder. And he also gives another group what is known as a placebo. It does not contain the medicine. Now the patients don't know which one has the medicine. They don't know whether they're getting the medicine or not. This one would be called the experimental group, and this is the means of control. This is the group that is the control. The reason being is when he looks at the results, he'll know whether or not the pill had any effect. Now, a constant, something for this experiment that doesn't change. And in this case, it's how it's how much medicine he is giving them. That remains constant. There could be more than more than that for constants. Now, the independent variable is the variable that in this case Dr. Square is manipulating. And in this case, it is the medicine itself that he's giving them. On the previous slide, the control was, the constant was how much. Here, it's the, the, the medicine by name, what, what medicine it is. Now, the dependent variable is the variable that changes as a result of the independent variable. And in this case, it's the observations of the pa patients after they've taken their pill. In other words, it's what these people do after they've taken the, the medicine. Now, Let's talk about another example. Let's say you wanted to know how high these two balls bounce. Now, they're actually made of different types of rubber, so therefore they may not bounce at the same height. In this case, the independent variable is the material or the height, because the height could influence the dependent variable, which is the height of the bounce, how high the ball bounced up. The material could, all, I'm also controlling the material, and that also could influence the height of the bounce. A control in this, I'm as a control for this, I'm going to use a tennis ball, because I know a tennis ball should give me a consistent height, excuse me, as it bounces. Now, a constant in this is what we're bouncing the ball on. In this case, it's the floor. You can see there's a coffee stain there. It's a bit embarrassing. Now, here's a synopsis. 
of what these things are. Control is what's being used. It's a comparison, and uh, you don't need to go. I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, so that's the point of it, and I hope that's been helpful.